um, the Leinster final I had to look forward to that evening as you say down in Portlaoise and on that Wednesday morning um, my mum found me in a flood of tears um, as there was crying I don't know the emotional tap was open and it just felt like I was so defeated here I just I don't want to hide it anymore and that was the first sign that she had seen that she thought she was seeing at Christmas mm. right in front of her eyes her 19 year old son in a flood of tears um, and it wasn't a whole lot that she had done in terms of you know saying saying much to me but it was when she had sat by my side and put her arm around my shoulder that I knew that I had that listening ear right by my side that I so deeply needed for those previous two years. And I think I was a couple of hours sitting there, you know, weeping as, as it were. And um, my mum knew she'd need to break the trend, you know, bring me out for a couple of hours. So she contacted my middle assistant, Maraid, who was off on that particular day. So she came over to the house and she brought me out for a couple of hours. And um, I still slag her to this day. The, the bright idea in her head was to bring me on a cliff walk out in the hills of Hoth. Right. Um, probably not the most idyllic thing to do before a Leinster final. But again, it was similar enough to, as it were, my mum. I had that listening ear that listening shoulder right by my side and my head never left the gravel. I could just, you know, see one foot in front of the other, but just knowing that I had it right by my side. And as I came back into the car, the cliff walk, of course, came to an end. And I'll never forget, as I shut that door, I spoke about those kind of thoughts and feelings that were, you know, going on for those two years. They couldn't bundling straight back in. And it was the first time I was thinking, maybe not even football can be my outlet at this stage, which was the inner turmoil that was going deep within. And I had my manager, Desi Farrell at the time, from push a button away to say, look, I can't go through it this phone. I can't go through it this match this evening. I'm in such a bad way, and to this day I don't know why. I never went through with that phone call, and um, so I went off home and I got my gear bag ready and I prepared for the match as I always did. And I met the lads in the team hotel for the pre-match meal. And even at that, you know, I was there in the team hotel. You know, the busyness of it, the, the buzz of a championship match in around that kind of time. I couldn't feel that. I had maybe half a sup of water and that was it. I was off on the bus on the port leash. Um, and, and I guess that kind of internal dialogue then was going deep within. I was on that bus. Um, I, I'm sure probably people can relate, kind of listening in, that you know, I sat myself at the, up at the top of the bus, I had my headphones on, I had a certain set of songs, maybe a certain playlist that brought me to a happier time and place, whether it be with a family member or a friend. And I was playing it as loud as I could, solely to drown out the thoughts that were going deep within. Mm. Um, and halfway through that bus journey, I contacted my middle system right to say, look, I'm in such a bad way here, I can't go through with this. Um, and she texted me back, as my family did for those previous two years, right by my side, they want to see me out on the pitch. So I did, I arrived to the ground and I prepared for the match that they always do. Um, I think I took half a sup of Luke's aid and that was it, I was off on the pitch, off on the port leash. And I say to this day, to be honest, it was the most satisfying 60 minutes of football I've ever played in my life. I was like a kid in the playground again. You know, I was running away from the thoughts that were going deep within. And if I'm right to remember, I think it was two or three minutes left in the game and we're four or five points up and I'm looking to the ref and you're probably thinking, you know, I'm telling him, blow, blow the whistle up. And I was thinking the exact opposite. I was thinking, don't, don't blow that whistle, I'm this in heaven here. a sanctuary for you. That was my sanctuary, that was my safe haven. That was where, I guess, the internal dialogue that was going deep within couldn't get me, you know. And of course, inevitably, he blew that whistle. Um, unfortunately, we were victorious in the game. But out of that, it was actually word of man the match. Um, as I'm walking on top of these steps, the pedestal-like figure that are referred to way back in those kind of early days, living this idyllic life yet again, collecting this man in the match award. Little did people know what was going, for me, going on for me only 12 hours previous in a flood of tears my mum in my sitting room. They just seen this idyllic figure yet again, living yeah, this great lit life. Literally up there in a pedestal. Mm -hmm. 